And how do you, because you get like interviews with guys who are, which seems crazy to me, but maybe just it's different in Mexico, but they're like active members of cartels. Like you, you kind of like talk to them, right? Like, yeah. Why, I mean, it, Cause like, I think like in America, you ever like, they would be like, I'm not talking to a journalist. I'm currently committing crimes. Whereas there, they're like a little, and there was like, I saw you were posting about it. There's like, they have Instagram pages. Like they're trying to just basically yeah. like blow up and be famous. And I was looking at it before the show started, like one of their Instagram pages, uh, that guy. And you're like, yeah, they're just crazy weapons. He's got like tigers and stuff. Yeah. I mean, this is like, so this, this now, this, them use, they, they've been using like media and propaganda stuff for some years. But more recently, we've got like, I mean, now we're dealing with a new generation of guys. So like, you know, at the beginning, you know, I go back 20 years ago, 23 years ago, and there was like old guys that kind of were older than, than, than I was at the time. And, um, you know, these old wizard narcos who grew up in the mountains and come down with sandals and started these cartels. And now we've got them. Then they had a new generation. They kind of call them the juniors. And now we've got the new generation, you know, like, like, uh, um, and these, so these are people, they come up. So these people now, this guy, we had an interview, I published an interview today on my Substack that my colleague uh, conducted the interview. And it was with a, a narco who, whose nickname is El Plaga or the Plague. And he says that's because he leaves nobody alive, like a plague. Now, he was 24 years old. So he, you know, somebody who was like born in 99, you know, uh, real kind of a, maybe a, a, an older generation Z, generation yeah. Z. And- For 20, 2000. Yeah, yeah. 2000, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and who's like, they start using Instagram. Now, it's it is nuts. You say, why, why are these guys using Instagram when they're on the run? Yeah. Now, there's different things. One is that they- People, they like the fact that they can be on the run and be using Instagram and have tens of thousands of followers and be showing off. That shows even more power. Right. Like, the government's not even arresting me. Here, I've got 64,000 followers on Instagram and I'm showing off my guns and my my pet monkey. They, they even had a yeah, pet Yeah, I saw, pet though. Yeah, they, that, that's like a big thing now is they have pet monkeys. That's just like it's a this, status. This, this they had the tigers. Tiger. Yeah, I mean they, they've had tigers and, and 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 lions for a long time, and they, these fed people to them and that kind of stuff. But like the first monkey appeared last year in, in his gunfight in Mexico State, and it was dressed up. It was with a bunch of gunmen, and they had the monkey dressed up in a bulletproof jacket, and actually kind of with them. And it was like, and it got it got killed, and then they wrote a song about it. Had its own like drug ballad about the monkey. Yeah, and there's a whole like music scene around it as well, right? Well, so ma massive, 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 massive gig. Yeah. It's not so, so, so the Instagram thing, yeah. I mean, the, I mean, the music is again. This goes back a long time, and it and it keeps changing. Um, they pay they pay people to write songs about them. Yeah. They now all some of the artists writing these songs are, are very very popular. I mean, these are people that you can see two hundred million views on their videos on YouTube. Right. I mean, that's how. Can big, you turn it down? Big, like, is there that kind of thing where you're like, like, do they just, if you say, no, I don't want to do it. And they just kind of say, okay. Or is there like, uh, do, like do, they, do they make people write songs under like kind of threats? Well, it's interesting because, so you, you, you have people who write that genre. They often, that genre of drug ballads, they might do love songs as well, but they have, they dedicated to that song of drug. So once they're into that genre, they kind of need to understand it. Now I talked to one, I interviewed one, um, musician one singer um in in la um and he described to me how one of the very big drug lords a guy called el mencho who's one of the biggest drug lords in mexico uh contacted him through through a uh an intermediary and said uh, i want how much do you charge for a drug ballad they call them corridos yeah and he said well it's kind of like once you get that kind of it's kind of hard to you can't really say no so he said forty thousand dollars Thinking yeah. I'm a minute, and and the guy came back saying, "I'll take two. Yeah, yeah, probably one, that's like <laughs> one, one for me, and one for this gunman, this trigger man who's been really good, and he deserves his own song. Yeah, a song, yeah. So this guy wrote the songs, and he said the drug lord himself sent him the kind of lyrics that he wanted, and he said he looked at them, and they, you know, they, they had to had to kind of help them a bit, make them a bit more poetic, and make them rhyme and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then you know these, and then he, he did them. And uh, and but then you see some bigger name bands um, who have got you know songs, you know people who are very high on Spotify right now, you know real big guys. But this guy I'm talking about was a guy. He was one, not one of the biggest ones, and he'd have videos on YouTube with like 50 million views. Wow. So this is how big this culture is. I mean, it's it's big in Mexico. It's big in the United States because the, a lot of these movies, these artists, I went to the record label. Now, some of these, again, they have these artists who do love songs and then switch to doing corridos a lot of the time. Then there'll be other ones who just do pure love songs. But like, they'll basically be able to play in any state in the United States yeah. and get like 10,000 people. Right. Well, I mean, I guess it's similar to like gangster rap, but then it's kind of like in that realm, I guess, kind of. It, it, it is. No, no, it totally is. Uh, and one of the earlier uh, guys who was kind of one of the fathers who developed this genre was a guy called Chelino Sanchez. And he he kind of blew up around the same time as Gangster Rap did. You know, he actually blew up in 92. And so he blew up and then was literally shot dead. He actually was first shot in Coachella, not the festival, but playing in a in a kind of in a, in a venue in the, in the town of Coachella. Okay. Survived. He, he took out a, a, a pistol while he was on stage. Fire back into the crowd. Actually, <laughs> shot somebody dead in the crowd. Um, it, you know, he, he didn't get charged for that because he was defending himself. He was, was in a coma for a bit. Survived. Came out. Started singing. Went went to Mexico four months later, uh, and was shot dead. Um, but he was the guy. And so when he kind of a lot of the. Um, uh, the, the kind of cholos they call them the guys in LA were the kind of gang bangers then with shaved heads and yeah yeah they started like you know this is our this is our guy this is our gangster 